Good morning, dear students. My name is Dr. Ranjit Sharma. Today I am here to deliver a lecture on flowering plants and plant reproduction. So, assuming that the flowering plants are belong to the group of angiosperms, and they are the most fascinating part of the plant. So, what is flower basically? It is the reproductive structure found in the flowering plant. As in your 11th standard, you have studied different part of the flower, like there is a bract, there is a pedicel, there is a sepals and the petals. Likewise, the innermost row, there will be antrocious and the gynocious. So, the antrocious is further divided into two parts. First part is the filament, which is thread-like, and second, a log-like structure is called as and which is mostly in yellow color. Then the second is gynocean, it is also called as pistil. It is further divided into two parts, that is stigma, style, and ovary. So can you please tell me that what is the outermost row of the flower is called? You can drop your answers in the chat box. So I'll find out okay, how much you know about this thing. So this is the outermost row. Flower basically made up of four rows. Char rows within us can take it. So single unit of the outermost row that is called as sepals. So now we see okay, what is the right answer. So the outermost row of the flower that is called as calyx and the single unit of calyx that is called as sepals. The second rule that is called as corolla that is most attractive color are found into the petals. So that is the second rule of the flower in that they are colorful maybe of green, uh, sorry maybe of pink, red, blue. So their colors are different. On the another hand the calyx that is most probably having green color. Then the androsium come. Androsium contains the role of stamens that is further divided anther and filament. And after that, the gynosium that I had discussed that is pistil. So calyx, the outermost role. Here you can see this one. This is the flower of the viscous in that this green portion that is called as calyx, the whole group. And the single unit of this, it is called as sepals. These are mostly typically in green color. Sometimes they are petal like, means they are colorful. On the another hand, corolla, the role of petal or the second role of the flower, they are always colorful and they attract the animal for the pollination. That's their role into that. And that two rules are called as non-essential role. Now we are switching to the essential role of the flower. What do you understand by essential role of the flower? That if these rules are absent, so the reproduction is not occur. The first in that important one is androsium. That androsium word is taken from a Greek that is andros oikia. It means that man's house. So in that androsia, one or more stamens are situated and each stamens are having filament topped by an anther, which anther produce a pollen grain. So over here, you can able to see, this is a flower of Dhatura as an example. Here is this whole stem that is divided into filament, a thread-like structure with that, an anther is attached okay, and into the center, the pollen grains are situated. So semen is further divided in filament and anther. And anther is having pollen set or in that pollen set, you have the pollen grains. Pollen contains the male gametophyte. The two part of typical stamens, that is filament, terminal or anther, if here you can observe that is divided into two parts. That is called as bilobed structure of the anther. You can say that is a dithecus. So over here we had took 
a transverse section and further in detail. We'll study what is microsporangium and what is these pollen grain. So typical angiosperm is bilobed, as I told you. It is having two theca, means two compartment, that is bilobed one. Into that two thecas, the four chambers are there, that is tetragonal. Okay, on that four side at the corner, there will be microsporangia are situated. Microsporangia are what? A sac which is containing microspores, and your microspores is producing the pollen grains. So, pollen, when microsporangia are mature, they are creating a pollen sac. So microsporangia, if you took this transverse section, it is just for one, and hollow tube is formed, okay, this. Over this, a hollow tube is formed that is called as pollen sac. So in transverse section, this is a diagrammatic representation of that anther. The anther is two-lobed, but having the four chamber. In that four chambers, four microsporangiums are there, which is having the microsporangia. That is generally surrounded by a four walls. The outermost is the epidermis, then the endothecium, the middle layer, and the tapetum. Tapetum is the nourishing layer which gives nourishment to the uh, mother cell. Okay? The outer three layers perform the function of protection and help in the dehiscence, means releasing of the anther, uh, pollen grains. So here, there is a transverse section into this. The pollen grains are into here. Here are the four chambers. Tetrad conditions will be there. Okay. So in that, four tetrads are there and that is called as your pollen grains. Uh, can you have an example? Okay, anther are always bilobed or uh, can you give me an example of any unilobed anther? Do you know? Uh, give your answer in the chat box. If you know the name of uh, that plant in which a uh, unilocular anther, not the bilobed one, is formed. I just want to see if you know this answer. So we are leading to the pollen grains. Pollen grains are generally spherical, measuring about 20 to 25 micrometer in diameter. And it has prominent two layer over here. You are able to see that is a two layer one. So the outermost layer, this one is called as exine. And it is made up of sporopollenin. That is a most resistant organic material. And pollen grains exine has a prominent apparatus. In that, there is one pore is there. That pore is called as germ pore, where the sporopollenin is absent. Okay, The inner wall is this one. Of the pollen grain is called as the entine one. The outer is called as exine. The inner one is called as entine. It is a thin and continuous layer made up of cellulose and pectin. Over here, exine is made up of sporopollenin and the inner one that is of cellulose and pectin. When the pollen grain is mature, it contains two cells. This is a gradual process of a maturation of a pollen grain. When the pollen grain is mature, it is two cell condition. One is the vegetative cell and the second one is the generative cell. Right? So there is a two cell condition. And in almost 60% of the angiosperm, pollen grains, pollen grains sheds at two cell condition. Right? When pollen grains are released or dehiscent, from the anther, they are two cell condition in a 60% of the scenario. But rest in the 40%, it may be like it is going into the mitotically division and it gives rise to two male gametes. Before pollen grains are shed, they are three cell condition. Now, the next important essential role of the flower. 
and the innermost role of the flower that is gynoecium this word is also taken from the greek that is gynoecos oikia that means woman flower the all female part of the pistil is pistil with ovule inside fine so that is forming a whole gynoecium over here you can say gynoecium is in common term is called as pistil so that is divided into three part the upper one is stigma over here you can clearly observe this then the cylindrical tube like structure that is called as style then the lower most bulgy structure that is called as ovary which contains the ovule so the basic female reproductive structure is the carpel each physical body is called as pistil as i told you that is the in common the gynoecium is called as pistil so in many of the cases there is flower containing only single carpel so that is called as monocarpellary or in certain scenario it is containing mul several carp carpels so it is called as multi carpellary now in case of multi carpellary what will happen either that pistils are fused so that is called as cell carpels okay or they are not fused they are ununited so they are called as apocarpels in your inside the ovarian cavity there is a locule okay in the ovary if we take the transverse section of ovary so there will be ovarian cavity there is a hole or cavity into the ovary that cavity is called as locule over here and here you are able to see this is the locule the placenta it is the adjoining site where the ovule is attached so here this is called as placenta and this is called as placenta over here the ovule is attached and placenta it is into the locule or you can say ovarian cavity arising from this placenta in common word it is called as ovule or in scientific terminology we can say it is a megasporangia okay so megasporangia is attached to the placenta the number of ovules in ovary may be one so example of that may be the pedicel mango in that only one ovule is present or in many cases there are many ovules so if many ovules are there they will generate into the many seeds any number of seeds if only one ovule is present it will formulate only one seed okay so uh, do you now we can see uh, do you understand what is locule what is ovule and what is placentation what is the difference between in this three uh, maybe you get confused in between locule and ovule so locule is basically a cavity which having the placenta from which the megasporangia is attached and it will mature so this is there do you know uh, how many type of placentation is there you know about it please give me answer in chat box yes so over here what we are observing this is called as exile presentation why it is exile because it is at the axis inner axis okay exile position it is in an exile position that's why it is called as exile position over here that is a parietal presentation why it is parietal presentation because it is situated at the periphery of the locule so on the basis of where placenta is present from where the ovule is generate that is called as placentation okay and the type of placentation so in your book uh, 12th ncert that this figure is given that is basically demonstrating uh, your uh,
pistil containing stigma, style, and ovary. Here is the thalamus. Over here, that is the example of syncarpus. So this ovary is fused. Over here, the example of apocarpus ovary. So you can see that this ovaries are not fused. They are ununited. Okay, and here is the example of anatropus ovary. Right. So uh, we had talked about the up to. Now we switch to the megasporangia, or which is commonly called as ovule. So it is attached to the placenta by means of a stalk that is called as funicle. Here is the placenta from which the ovule is attached that is called as funicle. And the reason in between the ovule and the funicle that is called as hilum. Thus, hilum represents the junction between ovule and the funicle. Each ovule has one or two protective envelope that is called as integument. So here is the outer integument, here is the inner integument that is giving protection to the ovule. So two integuments are present, which one? The outer one and the inner one that gives a protection to the ovule. After that uh, integument, integument is encircled the mucilus, this part, okay? This part is the mucilus one, which is encircled by your integuments. But this integuments have a small opening, okay? That is called as microvite. Opposite to this microvite, this region, this is called as chalaza. That is the basal part of the ovary. And into the mucilus, there is a sac. Okay? That is called as embryo sac or the female gametophyte. And what is the use of mucilus is that it have abundance of reserve food material that will be in future converted to the endosperm and utilized by the embryo. And ovules generally have a single embryo set formed from a megascope. So how this embryo set is formed? Now we see this. Okay, now tell me that uh, had you studied different type of ovule? Uh, here is the example of anatropic one. Uh, can you even give me an example of other type of ovules? If you know, give me that answer in my in chat box. Yeah. So uh, that embryo set is formed from the megaspore. How it will be uh, formed? That is uh, that will be formed from megaspore mother cell. It is called as megasporogenesis. Ovule generally differentiate a single megaspore mother cells, in short a descendancy, in the micropylar region of the mucilus. It is large cell containing dust cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus. The microspore mother cell undergoes mitotic division, uh, meiotic division and result in the production of four megaspore. Yeah. Uh, now, can you tell me okay, what is mitotic division and what is meiotic division? In end of mitotic division, how many number of cells you found? And in meiotic division, how many cells you will found? And where meiotic division is observed? That is in somatic cell or in a reproductive cell? So, microspore mother cell undergoes a meiotic division and results in the production of four megaspores. And from this four megaspores, the female gametophyte will be produced. Female gametophyte is a what? That is your embryo cell. So, in a majority of flowering plants, one of the megaspore is functional. Amongst that four, only 
one is functional while the other three gets degenerate only the functional megaspores develop into the female gametophyte which is commonly called as embryo cell so here we can see this process that over here there is one megaspore mother cell is there mucilage and uh, that is happening at a micropylar end over here there is a megaspore dyad condition means uh, from one to two cells are produced and after that meiotic division four cells are produced that is called as megaspore tetrads okay so after that what is happening then female gametophyte is going to produce so in that what will be happen this three cells are degenerate and only among this only one cell will go for the maturation in that also two cell four cell and eight cell conditions are there and after that the mature embryo sac will be produced in that eight cell condition what will be happen okay three cells will be at the antipodal cell two are the polar nuclei and two synergic cells and the egg cells so here is the figure of the mature embryo sac so over here over the chalazal end the antipodal cells are there at the micropylar end there will be one egg cell two synergic cell and in a central cell two polar nuclei are observed fine are you getting it how this is form how embryo sac is formed fine now uh, just i am showing you the video before uh, starting uh, the fertilization just have a look on this that how sexual reproduction in plant is occurring sexual reproduction in plants in this module you will learn how sexual reproduction takes place in flowering plants it is spring season flowers are blooming on the trees it is indeed a beautiful sight flowers attract all of us they are the most beautiful part of the plant isn't it you already know that flowers are not present only to add beauty to the plant they are in fact the reproductive part of the plant in the flower stamen is the male reproductive part while carpel is the female reproductive part some flowers contain both male and female reproductive parts such flowers are called bisexual flowers for example pea china rose etc on the other hand some flowers possess either the male or the female reproductive parts such flowers are called unisexual flowers for example corn cucumber etc now let us know about the different parts that make up a stamen and a carpel a stamen is made of two main parts anther and filament the anther produces pollen grains it is the pollen grain that contains the male gametes a carpel on the other hand is made up of three parts the terminal part is called the stigma the middle elongated part is the style and the swollen bottom part is the ovary inside the ovary ovules are present it is the ovule that has the female gamete called the egg cell for sexual reproduction to take place a male gamete is to be fused with the female gamete thereby forming a zygote now for that the male gametes have to reach the female gametes for this first a pollen grain carrying the male gametes is transferred from the stamen of a flower to the stigma of the same or the other flower such transfer of pollen grains is known as pollination 
If the pollen grain of a flower lands on the stigma of the same flower, it is called self-pollination. But if the pollen grain of a flower lands on the stigma of another flower of the same or another plant of the same type, it is called cross-pollination. Pollination occurs with the help of different agents like wind, water or animals. Once a pollen grain reaches the stigma of a suitable flower, a tube grows from the pollen grain. This tube travels through the style and reaches the ovary. The male gamete from the pollen travels in this tube and reaches to the female gamete present in the ovule of the ovary. After that, the male and the female gamete fuse together to form the zygote. This process of fusion of male and female gametes is called fertilization. The zygote formed after the fertilization then divides several times to form an embryo inside the ovule. The ovule develops a tough coat and changes to a seed. The ovary, on the other hand, ripens and forms a fruit around the seed. At this time, the other parts of the flower, like the sepals and petals, fall off. So, a seed present inside a fruit contains an embryo, which is actually a baby plant. Each time a seed is planted in soil and provided appropriate conditions, it grows into a seedling, which then... So, here you had seen how the fertilization or sexual reproduction in plant is occurred. So, that is begin with the pollination. Pollination, we are going to discuss in detail. How it occurs, how many types of pollination is observed. So the process of transfer of pollen grains, that is dehiscence or shedded from the anther to the stigma of the pistil, this is called as pollination. So depending on the source of pollen, pollination can be divided into three types. First is autogamy, as we had seen in video, that if with, within the same flower, pollination is occurred, that is called as autogamy. But this is the rare condition. Only in clistogamous flower, this condition is observed because clistogamous flowers are the closed flower. Their petals are not yet open so only in that scenario this autogamy is happen why autogamy is not common in all the flowers that is because of the maturation stage of the gynoecium and the androecium or you can say the pistil and the stem is different so at the same time in a same flower the stamen and the pistil are not get mature at the same time Okay, that's why autogamy is only seen in Christogamous flower. And that is also called as self pollination. Then, second one is gyatinogamy, that is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of another flower but of the same plant. Means that flower is belong to that same plant but from the another plant. If that condition is called as gatenogen. The third condition that is xenogen. In that, what has happened? The transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma, but for a different plant. Okay, so for genetic modification and in that, xenogen is more acceptable. Fine. So in uh, the video you had seen that there are various agents which are responsible for pollination. So uh, can you give me what agents are responsible for that? Please drop your word. So we uh, have one by one in detail okay, which agents are responsible and how and which is the most common. So in plants, two type of agents are there. One is abiotic. In abiotic, wind and water is there. 
by wind and water pollination is occurred and uh, in case of uh, biotic wood there are the animal which are responsible for the pollination in animal so will animals are responsible most common one as you can see they are bees so on their uh, legs and all the pollen grains are attached and it will be transferred to the another plant then the butterfly fly beetle ants moth birds and the hummingbird uh, the small one which is uh, having continuous flying over there that is hummingbird common pollination agent is there wind pollination is quite common in grasses on the another hand water pollination is common in vanisneria and the hydrilla they are the aquatic plant so after the pollination what has happened that is a germination of pollen grains and the fertilization but it is not always like that if pollen grain is fallen onto the uh, stigma so it is always not going to be germinate it is like acceptance of that pollen grains and the stigma or the pistil if pistil accept that pollen grains then it is able to germinate and lead to the fertilization that is just for an example ke there are several type of pollen grains uh, are fall onto the stigma that will be related to that particular plant okay or the other species of the plant or another family of the plant they are fallen onto the stigma of that so only stigma will allow them to grow if that is compatibility compatibility is there with the pollen grains then only the pollen grains is going to germinate so pollen grains germinate and they produce a pollen tube here is the microscopical view of the germination of the pollen grains they are the thread like structure they elongated and reach up to the your embryo sac so they reach up to the ovary and to the embryo sac and then it fertilizes the ovary so when over here in this figure you can able to see here is the pollen tube which is penetrating into the filiform apparatus okay so pollen tube after reaching the ovary enters the ovule this is your ovule through a micro pi reason a reason which is have a opening over there okay then it enters on the synergies through a filiform apparatus and all this events okay which one that is pollen grain deposition onto the stigma and to pollen grain germinate form a pollen tube and it enters into the ovule this is all together referred as the pollen pistil interaction fine so up to this it is called as pollen pistil interaction in that pollen germination is included after that what will be there okay this pollen tube will eject the male gametophyte into the embryo sac so the fertilization will occur the so fertilization in plant is known because it is having double fertilization how double fertilization is occur when two male gametophyte as you had seen in two video ke when this tube is into the microphylar end and ejecting two male gametes it will one fuse with the egg okay over here you can able to observe there is a two male gametophyte okay so over here what has happened there will be this which cell will produce two gametophyte is it vegetative one or generative one just recall it i had told you at pollen grains in the pollen grains there is two condition either it is two cell or it is three cell one okay so over here 
which condition will be there and which cell is turn out into this male gametes two male gametes are formed then how many cell condition was observed in that pollen grain two cell or three cell just drop your message in chat box so when the male gametes move towards the egg cells and fuse with new cells okay this is one gamete will move toward the egg cell and fuse with this this is called as syngame and it forms the zygote okay and this zygote is of uh, how much uh, that is diploid one two n condition is there okay so two n zygote is formed and the other male gamete will fuse with here these are the which cells that is polar nuclei in polar nuclei one female male gamete will be fused so this is three cell condition over here you can able to see over here that is zygote 2n over here that is the 3n condition that is called as a triploid primary endosperm okay so that is 3n condition and again it will form an endosperm and in short it is called as pes so in double fertilization uh, in your book this figure is given so in this what is happen that fusion of three haploid nuclei it is term as triple fusion since two nuclear cells and the one male gamete since two type of fusion syngamy and triple fusion takes place in the embryo sex so this phenomena is term as double fertilization so over here two fertilizations are occurred okay one the endosperm and second one is 2n so two fertilization is occurred that's why this phenomena is termed as double fertilization and this event is unique into the flowering plant then the central cell after the triple fusion becomes the primary endosperm cell that is called as pc and develop into the endosperm while the zygote develop into the embryo so following the double fertilization there are several events happen that is endosperm and embryo development maturation of ovum into seed and ovum into fruit so collectively all this process again okay, it is called as post fertilization event so in that what is happening endosperm is developed what is basically an endosperm that is the reserve food material and it is used for the nourishment or nutrition of the developing embryo so there is two type of endosperm is also one is pre nuclear endosperm you can uh, have an example that is when clearly see pre nuclear uh, you have seen a coconut okay in that coconut uh, into that a coconut water is there and the another fleshy material white material is there which which we are very like to you know so in that what is the free water is there that is the free nuclear endosperm and the fleshy with white material is there that is the cellular endosperm as there is a wall formed in the in between the nuclei so it is become the cellular endosperm the early stage of embryo development are similar in both Uh, the case of plant that is monocotyledon or the dicotyledon now we see how embryo is developed in monocot and the dicot hope it is clear to you people that what is pre nuclear endosperm that is not having a wall there are multi nucleated one and that is in majorly liquid form okay on the another hand cellular endosperm that is uh, creating a wall between the nucleus and uh, make a fleshy endosperm right so now the zygote give rise to the 
flow embryo and subsequently to the globular heart shape and mature embryo as you had seen in that video the heart shape embryo uh, uh, the heart shape embryo is formed so a typical dicotyledon embryo that is consisting two cotyledons how we differentiate dicot and monocot can you uh, give me three points on the basis of which you can differentiate a dicot plant from the monocot one drop your message in the chat box i just wanted to know okay you know that on the basis after you see that plant you can be able to tell that it belongs to dicot or it belongs to monocot one so over here we are also saying that what is happening the portion of uh, embryonal axis above the level of cotyledon is the epicotyledon and this epicotyledon is terminated with the pumule or the stem tip okay the cylindrical portion below the level of cotyledon means this way okay this is cylindrical portion so uh, below that level what you, what is there that is hypocotyle and we need that there will be a radical or root tip will be there and root tip is covered with a root cap on the another hand if we see the embryo of monocotyledon it only possesses a one cotyledon so it is called as scutellum at its lower end the embryonal axis had the radical and root cap enclosed in an undifferentiated sheet that is called as colorica the portion of the embryonal axis above the level of attachment of uh, scutellum is the epicotyle okay and epicotyle has a shoot apex and a few leaf pronodia enclosed in a hollow foliar structure that is coleoptile over here okay you can able to see this shoot apex and coleoptile then scutellum radical root cap and we need that there will be coleoptile so when the embryo is formed after that the ovule is get mature when ovule is get mature that is turn out into the seed so in angiosperm the seed is the final product of sexual reproduction it is often described as fertilized ovule and it will be formed inside the fruit what is fruit then? that fruit is the maturation of ovary okay a seed typically consists of seed coat cotyledon and an embryo axis so dicot and monocot Who are there? Basically, how uh, they have that is seed coat, okay, cotyledons and embryonal axis is there. The cotyledon of the embryo are simple structure, generally thick and swollen due to storage of other food. Suppose today in the game we can see the the cotyledon are swollen one. Seed may be non-albuminous or ex-albuminous. what uh, do you understand by non albuminous one non non albuminous means that plant which used the endosperm before that seed formation that is p and ground and albuminous one that is having the endosperm stored stored into that that example of wheat maize barley and castor the embryo may be entered in a state of inactivation at a stage when embryo is inactive that stage is called as dormancy and when we give a favorable condition to the seed and we saw the seed we pour the water we give them a adequate temperature moisture oxygen all the conditions are suitable and favorable to that seed it get germinated right it germinate and it grow into the whole plant So, uh, as I had told you earlier, that as a human mature, it turns out into the seed. Likewise, the ovary develops into the fruit. The wall of ovary develops into the wall of fruit, and that wall is called as perigee. 
So on the basis of how fruit is developed, there is two types. One is true fruit and the second one is false fruit. A true fruit is called as which is developed from the ovary. Here is I had taken an example of grabs in that the ovary is swollen and into that the seed is there. So the fleshy layer okay that is formed by the ovary that's why it is a true fruit and on the another hand if the fruit is not formed from the ovary that is called as false fruit. so uh, from which material that is formed that is formed from the thalamus so that's why apple is the example can you uh, give me one one more example of one false fruit you know and one true fruit you know? so please drop in the chat box your answers accordingly i just want i'm so curious to know about the the you know that uh, the fruit you generally eat yeah so you can be able to identify them if they are true fruits or they are false fruits now the another third condition is there that is called as parthenocarpic fruit so which fruit is called as parthenocarpic which are developed without fertilization so now the another question is uh, in the queue um, by this what you understand by parthenocarpic fruit and it is developed without fertilization okay so in fertilization basically which thing is happening okay what what is essential to call that event as a fertilization if fertilization is not happen over here so can you define fertilization okay stop your answer quickly so basically fertilization means the fusion of male and female gamete okay and then the product will be formed right so over here parthenocarpic one there is no fertilization is happen an example we can know very well know that is banana so although seeds in general are the product of fertilization likewise over here we have talked about the fruit one okay on the another hand certain seeds are there okay in flowering plants such as certain families in which certain species of that family like asteraceae and grasses have evolved a special mechanism to produce seed without fertilization and that is called as apomixis so Uh, what do you understand by apomixis? That apomixis is the process in that seed is formed without fertilization. Basically, seed is formed after fertilization, after fusion of male and female gamete. Then it's turn out into the seeds. Okay, but over here, what is happening? It is seed. Yeah, so it is the seed forms without fertilization, and this process is called as apomixis one the another uh, phenomena that is called as polyembryony in that what is happening that polyembryony uh, polyembryony means poly means many embryo means many seeds so more than one embryo in the seed right so poly embryo more poly many embryo in a single seed that condition is called as polyembryony so that kind of condition we can observe with citrus fruit it can be in your uh, lemon if you open up their seeds you can find it out more than one embryo in that okay uh, can you use your logic and give me benefit of apomixis this event is uh, having any importance in agriculture or something yeah give your answer in chat box 
basically in hybridization technique na yeah in hybridization atomics have a crucial role to sustain its genetic variability okay so here it is thank you all about the flowering plant and its reproduction i have you have a uh, few or many queries so you can drop your messages uh, into that if you have any queries regarding this and i'm finishing my lecture thank you so much to all of you